factoring now because the only difference here, guys, is we're just factoring two higher powers. But that's okay. The same idea kind of works. Hopefully, you guys are feel fairly comfortable with x squared minus 16 is x minus 4 times x plus 4. So we still need to get 16. So we know our, answer, we know our product is going to be negative 4 and 4. But when we're, our first two terms have to give us x to the fourth now, not x squared. So if we were going to write the zeros, I'm going to replace y with 0. And I could say that's going to be x squared minus 4 times x squared plus 4. OK, because I just now have to raise the power of my factors. That's basically the difference that I have to make now in my factoring techniques. Um, so now I can just apply the zero product property to solve. I think that's kind of the easiest way to solve these. And then you add 4, add 4. So x squared equals 4, subtract 4, subtract 4. x squared equals negative 4. So when I square root, please, 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 if I've already mentioned it one time before so far in this year, have to make sure you guys include plus or minus x equals plus or minus 2. In this case, guys, again, you can think of the negative 4 as um, x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 1 times 4. So therefore, that could be x equals plus or minus square root of negative 1 times the square root of 4, which is plus or minus 2. Square root of 4 is 2i. All right. Um, and that to just kind of go through those. Uh, go through simplifying you know, the radicals. Then the other thing if we want to look at this is we, uh, to find all the zeros we got, just to, so we could write this back as linear factorization. So what I do is just set these all back equal to x and then equal to 0. So I could write this as x plus 2 times x minus 2, and then x plus 2i times x minus 2i. Okay, So that would be finding the zeros and then rewriting it back as linear factorization.